We're continuing our studies in Chapter 22 on Protein Synthesis, and in this lesson we'll be looking at protein folding. In particular, we want to look at protein folding as it relates to the activity of molecular chaperones. They use the energy of ATP hydrolysis to help proteins refold. They can do this in a number of different ways. We're going to look at three molecular chaperones. First, we'll look at trigger factor. This is the first molecular chaperone that most proteins encounter because it positions itself just outside the exit tunnel of the ribosome. As you can see by examining the figure on the right, trigger factor is highlighted in red, green, blue, and yellow, and it is bound to certain regions of the ribosome, perfectly positioned to bind to the nascent polypeptide highlighted in magenta as it comes through the exit channel of the ribosome. As the nascent polypeptide exits the ribosome, the trigger factor will bind to hydrophobic patches of the protein. These would normally be folded up within the protein. Trigger factor then may release the polypeptide so that it can fold up on its own, or it may hand off the protein to another chaperone for further assistance in folding. Another type of molecular chaperone is DNAK. It is not associated with the ribosome. This molecular chaperone clamps down on the protein and then releases it, thereby allowing it to refold itself. Again, it binds to hydrophobic patches of the protein that would normally be folded within the internal regions. So the fact that these patches are exposed means that the protein is misfolded. In our surface model here, DNAK is highlighted in green and the target protein in yellow. As you can see, it clamps down and surrounds the target protein. Lastly, we have the complex GROW-EL, GROW-ES. We have considered this in an earlier chapter. GROW-EL is a complex of two heptameric rings, seven-membered rings, and protein folding occurs inside each of these two rings. Each of the seven subunits in each of the rings binds and hydrolyzes one ATP, so seven ATP molecules per ring. In the illustration at the top of the slide, you can see that the two rings are centrally positioned back to back within the complex. A misfolded protein is bound by GROW-EL, no doubt recognizing those exposed hydrophobic patches, and at the same time the GROW-EL ring also binds seven molecules of ATP. It is the binding of the GROW-ES cap that triggers the release of the peptide inside the barrel of GROW-EL. Subsequent hydrolysis of ATP releases the peptide from GROW-EL still within that GROW-EL chamber, thereby giving it an opportunity to refold itself. As in the case of every molecular chaperone, it doesn't actually fold the protein. It just gives it a protected environment so that it can refold itself. In our next video lesson, we want to look at some of the possible post-translational modifications to protein.